Hi folks, welcome back. And those of you that are new, welcome. Sorry I haven't done many videos lately. I'm having some health concerns. It's fairly serious, but it's just painful. And it's difficult for me to organize my thoughts and, you know, get them done on paper and try to do a decent job on topics that we all seem to care about. But I'm, I'm moving along. It's coming. It's coming slowly, so bear with me. David Marcus, he's somebody from the Heritage Foundation. And they're the authors of the famous or infamous, depending how you look at it, Project 2025. And talking about her interviewing a veteran in Hershey, Pennsylvania, because that state is incredibly important for the road to the White House to get the 270 electoral votes. And let's uh, do a little reading here. I hear it everywhere I go. This is in Hershey, Pennsylvania. In every corner and crevice of the country that I have covered during this election, menacing talk about Project 2025. Uh-oh. It's, uh, it's really crazy. It's really crazy. Never mind that Donald Trump has nothing to do with Project. Never mind that a canard that he does not, does is a coordinated lie between Democrats and the media. The fact that it is, it's working. In this town, yeah, it's working, just like the lies about January 6th, just like the lies about Charlottesville. When you have 95%, I will say 90 to be fair, of cable news running, helping, coordinating with the Democrats to win the presidency, how the hell do you fight back? It's just, it's just amazing to me. And it, 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 you can read the article if you want to. He talks about Hershey, Pennsylvania, and how you know how it was a small town, and then Hershey came and started his chocolate factory, and you know. Now they get to the point of Project Twenty Twenty Five. Mark, the person that's being interviewed, might have pointed out. Typically, in fact, almost always, voters who bring up Project Twenty Twenty Five to me have no real understanding what it is or what's in it. Yeah. No more than the whack based left think tanks of the progressive Democrats are automatically, uh, Kamala Harris automatically endorses what they do. But the Republicans don't know how to fight back. Now, some people say the Republicans don't know how to lie. And I don't believe that entirely, but they're bringing a knife to a gunfight and it's costing them. It may be the case that aside from a handful of works at the Heritage Foundation where this Frankenstein monster of a public policy came to life, nobody on earth knows what's in it. It's like 900 pages. I've heard it's just like a list of rights that Republicans want to take away, like on abortion. A woman in Virginia recently told me, when I press for specifics, and here it's always the same. You see millions of videos on YouTube, Twitter. When it press for specifics, she admitted that she is only relying on generalizations from the Democrats and the media. And that's 90% of their base. I'm not saying there are any Republicans that aren't like that, but it's a much, much, much smaller percent. But far more important than those or is or isn't the 900-page volume tome, which is mostly a set of human resource guidelines, it is, has absolutely positively nothing to do with Donald Trump and never has. <laughs> yeah. At every turn since Project 2025 became a major campaign issue, which the Democrats pushed, of course, Trump has disavowed it, so he has no impact on his presidency, and frankly, that he doesn't even know what's in it. I believe it, actually. He might have had some of his staff read part of it. He probably said, oh, nope, don't tell me. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. So what basis do Democrats and their feckless media allies continue to try to tie this albatross around the Donald's neck? Because it's working. Because it works. Lies work. Only through the most kind of half-truths and prevarications of democratic system has the offer. G.D. Vance wrote the foreword, Oh, uh-oh. Trump's critics insist, and he did in 2022, that only long before anyone thought he would be Trump's vice presidential nominee, at a time when many people thought Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, not Trump, would be the nominee. Wrote that long before he was asked to be on the ticket. J.D. Vance wrote the forward to Project 2025. 
They're all in on it. They're all in to take away your rights, especially women's reproductive rights, which has always been a, a bizarre way to put it. You're not reproducing anything. <laughs> then we were told that dozens of Trump former officials were involved with the project. And yes, Heritage is a think tank. It's a, I don't know if it's a 501c3, but it is a nonprofit. It doesn't have a college draft or using Indeed.com to hire his staff with GASP, former political policy officials. No kidding. Do you think? You can't shake a stick at liberal think tanks like the Center for American Progress. And I got to say, the Democrats and the progressives are great at naming their, their projects in their uh, organizations. You can't. Sick as stuck yet without seeing former Obama and Biden staffers. But nobody says Kamala Harris is planning out to hand over the keys to the federal government to them. I'm going to highlight that paragraph. It gets everything here. You can't shake a stick at liberal think tanks like Center for American Progress without pointing at a former Obama or Biden staffer. But nobody says Kamala Harris is playing to hand over the keys of the federal government to them. That's right. That's right. No, Trump's alleged connection and fealty to Project 2025 is simply a flat-out lie. And probably the best argument why he should never accept a second debate with Kamala Harris, especially on CNN, which pushes this particular prevarication daily. They fact-checked him, but all the lies that Kamala Harris said during that debate, the debate they had, were not fact-checked at all. It was really three to one, even more, in that debate. I don't blame them. If it's going to be CNN again, I will go F you. I'm not doing it. Why would I, you know, you guys are shooting at me. Why would I stick my head out the window? What are you, stupid? Why don't we have it on Fox? Now I say, well, well, they're a lot biased too. Not nearly as biased as the others. Not nearly. In the first debate, when Harris brought up a nonsense claims about Trump and the project, neither of the moderators broke into to fact check it as they did over and over with Trump. And almost as all the ABC anchors were in on it. Do you think? Do you think? This desperate and constant lying about Project 2025, I got to play my... Uh, Every time I see a project 2025, I got to do this. <laughs> Why do they keep doing it? Yeah, they may be desperate, some of them, because it works. Donald Trump tried to overthrow the government on January 6th. People believe that bullshit. It works. Even here in local politics. And I was elected official in the early 2000s for eight years. I was on Binghamton City Council. And I know all about lies. And the left is really, really good at it. Good meaning they are really, really destructive. I'm not saying the Republicans don't lie at local and national level, but they don't have nearly the balls of the Democrats. That's for certain. Price gouging fell flat. On a host of issues, she refuses to say where she stands. Nobody knows. That's why they picked so late. We can't talk about the issues. You could talk about the issues with a month, maybe. Say they waited a month before they pushed Biden out. Yeah, they might get away with it, but who knows? Except that it's closer to the center where she used to stand, and she refuses to do serious interviews to clarify her positions. Why should she? Why should she? It's working. So what does that leave in the campaign arsenal? Basically, vice presidential nominee Tim Waltz fixing old cars while lying about Project 2025. That's a great line, by the way. Sadly, from what I can tell in my travels and conversation, it is working. Something that rankles Generation X Joe, who's voting for Trump. It's just like the white supremacist and everything else he told me. Trump denounces it over and over and over, and it's never good enough. Just like there's good people on both sides, that's a lie. It was Mark Twain who said, a lie travels the world before the truth can get its pants on. That's an old saying, and it's true. Once you're convinced, you're convinced that the lie is the truth, and you're actually shown the truth, you don't believe it anymore. It causes a conflict in your brain, and that I think that's a lot of the reasons why the progressive Democrats have a lot of 
mental issues, we'll say. It'd be nice. They have a conflict in their brain. They know the truth, and they know what they want to believe and what have been told over and over and over, and they are in conflict. You can't have both in your brain. It will cause all kinds of issues for you. So you say the truth is a lie, and the lie is the truth. This sounds like 1984 stuff, because it does. It's amazing. So if Project 2025, wait a minute, is the heart print boxer shorts for the 2024 election, and time is running out to close the issue and the truth. I'll put the pants on, quote from Mark Twain. And there's the veteran there. He says, all you got to do is do a little digging, and you find out it's all, it's all a lie. But it works. It works. So what are you going to do? Trump can't spend all the time in the world debunking each single piece in Project 2025 that Democrats say he's for. Or that's Project 2025 will take center stage and be the top issue. If you say nothing, people will say, see, he didn't say anything, so it must be true. The Democrats are very, very, very good at it. Did it to me. They did it to me. Uh, they boycotted my business because I wasn't the Democrat they wanted. The local citizen action, which is an ultra, ultra progressive organization, is supposed to be a nonprofit, by the way. For those of you in New York, it's the Working Families Party. In one room is the Working Families Party, and in the other room is the Citizen Action, a nonprofit, which is supposed to engage in that kind of thing. So they say that room on the side is separate. Bullshit. Of course it isn't. They've been getting away with it because when everybody files suit, Against them, we live in a deep, deep, deep blue state. I consider myself behind enemy lines in a lot of ways. And there's nothing we can do as citizens except for move. And people have by the hundreds of thousands. Of course, they're all being replaced with non-citizens. I don't know what's going to happen. There's a lot of lies out there, a lot of lies. I can't think of anything that the Republicans have said that any consequence concerning Kamala Harris and Tim Walls. That was a major lie, a big, huge lie. And, of course, they would be denying it the whole time. You don't hear that. Why? Because they don't do it because they don't need to. That's just a, it's a conservative value. We just don't lie to that degree. Yeah, telling your kids there's a Santa Claus is lying, but there's degrees. There's degrees saying that Donald Trump wants to ban abortion. He said it a million times. I don't want a nationwide ban on abortion, a rule set when you can have an abortion. I wanted to go back to the states, even before Roe v. Wade was overturned. And I was in 10th grade in 1972 when it did. It's just incredible to me. But people buy this bullshit. Because not because they hear it over and over and over, it's because they want to believe it. How tough it is. When I switched parties to Republicans over a decade ago, it was hard for me. Not because the Democrats were anything great. Because I had to tell myself throughout my entire adult life, when I defended Democrats, and as time went on and became elected official, I saw what was really going on. To tell yourself internally everything I've believed in for 20 plus years as an adult, 30 plus years as an adult, was all bullshit. And I was wrong. Nobody wants to admit that. And that's the problem with Democrats today. They don't know the Democrat Party is not the Democrat Party of JFK or even Bill Clinton for that matter. The party is gone. It's been taken over by radicals. And you don't have to have a majority of something to take it over. 10, 15, 20% is enough. And that's what's happened. Now, there is no major third party. So where are these disillusioned Democrats going to go? They will not vote for a Republican. Especially minority Democrats. Because they've been drilled in their heads since they were two years old. Republicans are evil and they hate black people. They hate Hispanics. They hate... Uh, homosexuals, they hate lesbians, they hate LGBT community, they hate, they hate, they hate, they hate, they hate. No, they don't.
but they hear it so many times and they see it on TV and they hear it from their teachers in elementary school and in middle school and in high school and in college. They think that's true. They believe their world is flat. And when they see a picture, I believe it was Apollo 9, going over the moonrise and seeing the earth in the background, they still don't believe it. And that's the way it is, folks. Anyway, I could go on and on, but I think you have better things to do to me carrying on. Uh, thanks for your patience. You know I have some health problems lately. I'm starting to come back little by little by little. and should be on a regular schedule, hopefully in the next month or two. And you've got to do your research. You know, it's like, it's like mail-in bells. Well, I don't want to get off my ass at the kitchen, in the kitchen chair at the table. Here, I'll just fill it out and leave it for the postman. Postage free, too. Or I'll give it to the people that come to my door every, every other day looking for ballots. They want, they want easy peasy. Well, you're, you're, you're talking about the future of this country and the future of the world, for that matter, and you're too damn lazy to get up and vote. This is what's happened, and we need to stop it. Until the next time, God bless, goodbye, and good luck.